Welcome to Community Corner on 94.5 Praise, a program where we discuss the topics affecting the low country, but also programs and organizations making positive changes in our community. Today, we are pleased and blessed to have with us again on Community Corner uh, two people from the National Parks uh, uh, Service and the person of Mr. Mike Allen and uh, Miss Melissa English Reyes. Welcome to Community Corner once again. Thank you. Thank you for having us back. Yeah, we're glad to be back with you again, sir. It is always a, a blessing to have you all and to uh, speak on a subject that is near and dear to my heart and to the community of Beaufort uh, uh, in the larger sense. And that is on the Reconstruction Era National Monument. And you are in the planning stages now. And so uh, tell us, if you will, uh, what you uh, have in mind. Well, we're getting ready to enact our foundation document workshop, which is the beginning plans of the Reconstruction Era National Monument. So we're kind of getting ready to work with the public, We'd like the public to come out and support this endeavor, and is to talk about the significance of the park, the stories that we're going to tell, and it's really the, the foundation document of the park, how the park will evolve. So you, you are actually, before you draw up a concept, you are actually coming to the community and asking for their input that they might help to actually put together uh, this document that you are planning to do for the park, park service. That is correct. It is a planning document, but it's a planning document rooted in the public, the community, um, to tell the story because it, it is the story of Beaufort County. So, yes, we're asking the public to actually come down and participate in these three listening sessions um, about the beginnings of the park and how the park will actually be, how, how the park would evolve. Yes. I understand that uh, you all have now taken uh, uh, possession of the, the firehouse, uh, if you will. That is uh, correct. Tell That's us about that. Uh, where are you with that? Well, you know, when we were born, if you will, at the National Park Service site on January the 12th of this year, um, at that moment that President Obama signed the order establishing the park, immediately two properties uh, were actually were then ceded to the U.S. government, the Firehouse Station here in um, downtown Beaufort, along with Darrell Hall and some lands around Darrell Hall at the Penn Center. So these are in the purview of the United States government. And so right now, we're doing evaluation of both of these buildings to determine any needs or any uh, challenges that we may have with them so those things can be worked out. So when we are formally open to the public, we can then move forward with what we need to do within the con side, the con strip of the buildings themselves. Now, will you have an office in one of the two of these places? Yes, the actual the, the National Park Service headquarters for Reconstruction Era National Monument will be the old firehouse. That's where park management management will be. Um, over at the Penn Center at Darrell Hall, we hope we have volunteers and interpretive staff and an office where some of the staff will go, um, and we'll be over there too. But the visitor center, or as we call we call this the um, visitor contact station, will be at downtown Beaufort. Well, and I know Buford is uh, is happy about that. You are scheduled uh, to have meetings on, I believe, the twenty fourth, twenty fifth, and the twenty seventh of uh, of this month. Is that correct? Yes, we've um, reached out to the community and through a partnership opportunity, one with the Penn Center. So our first meeting will be on the evening of Monday, uh, July the twenty fourth, starting at seven o'clock p.m. through nine p.m. Um, on the campus of Penn Center at Fazell Hall. So we definitely, for those who want to make one of the meetings, that's the first one. Uh, the next night, uh, Tuesday, July the 25th, between 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., we will have our second meeting uh, in the town hall of the town of Port Royal. So individuals who would like to also attend that meeting, we welcome you to, to come there. And our final town hall will be held on Thursday night, July the 27th, between 6.30 and 8.30 at Historic Tabernacle Baptist Church here in downtown Beaufort. So we're giving the public three tangible places, sites, and opportunities to come, as Melissa said, to be a part of this process of building and directing and, and creating the park as we move forward. 
I, I would encourage our listening audience to please uh, put on your calendar one of the three of those dates and and really doesn't make any difference whether you live in the city of Buford or in Port Royal uh, or whether you are over on Allen. But if you are a resident of the low country here in Buford County, we ask you, if you will, please come and give your input uh, uh, relative to this important matter, uh, if you will. We are going to uh, later on in the program. We will go back through those dates again, and uh, we will um, continue to encourage you to be a part of that. Would you please uh, tell the audience what is the significance of having these uh, meetings uh, before the document is drawn up? Well, this is how actually how the document will be drawn up. We have a series of questions which talks about the stories, what's important about the area, where the public can leave their comments, and that's how we start drafting the um, actual planning document. Um, I just want to mention, for those who may not be able to attend any of the three, you can go on the website and we'll get the information to you and leave your public leave your comments because those questions are on the on the site so it's 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 no way you can't participate and we really want to encourage you to participate because it's very important in in establishing this foundation document because it is the that is where we get the information and the more input uh the less we have to input and we want to make sure that we feel that the that the public is in a part of this um so there are questions that will be answered um, where there'll be different listening stations where you can engage with the um, with um, the National Park Service. We have our planners coming from our Denver Service Center in Colorado. We have um, some from Washington, D.C. and from our Southeast Regional Office. And then Michael and myself will be here and we'll be answering answering those different questions and answering questions that you may have. Um, so it is it is a. It's a we call it a working document because the public is involved and there's questions and and, and engagement. And, and I would add, I think it's important to note here um, the importance of the public engagement and being a part of it. Often in government, you know, we may say, well, the government made that decision. They didn't ask anyone. They didn't seek any input. They didn't get any, get any suggestions. They just made a decision. I want folks to know that as Reconstruction Era National Monument moves forward, we need you to, to be a part of the yes. process, to bring your thoughts, your suggestions, your comments, whatever. Because at the end of the day, when this place is up and running fully, it's going to be based on these conversations. And therefore, we need you now at the outset to, to be intimately involved as we move forward. That, that is really an important to, uh, point to make. Uh, oftentimes, um, things do uh, or decide it, and there is Correct. no input. <clears throat> However, there are also the danger of not being involved is this. Of all the many uh, things that needs to be told about Buford and the history of Buford and the Port Royal experiment uh, it, that really, really does uh, pertain to blacks in the low country. Of, of the importance of all of that and that not having been uh, told nationally, Correct. now we have the chance to tell the story the way it really was, it would be a shame if we didn't get involved and help to actually pinpoint some of those important things that ought to be involved in the process. Because after it is written, then all you can do then is a, is complain. And, and I contend that it doesn't take much to complain, but what we need is we need people to get involved and to be a part of the process. Uh, would you say? We agree. We're, yeah. We really do. And it, and it is important. Um, this is one. Um, this is not done just for reconstruction. It's done for all our new parks and it's done for all our previous parks. It's a goal for the National Park Service through these foundation documents to have public input and comment and suggestions on our national parks. It is your national park. It's not mine. It is mine, but yeah. not while I'm working, but yes, it is. And then again, it also shows an investment that we as an agency are, 
are investing our time and energy in the public to listen to them. And on the flip side, it's an investment by the public to also give their time and attention to this here as well. So it's a win-win for all of us. You know, this has been on the drawing board really for the last 17 years. And, and probably a, a small group of individuals have really been the one that's been kind of carrying this now. But now we're in this national spotlight. It's important to more people be at the table. And these three meetings we just highlighted gives us this opportunity to have that open public discussion. And, and again, I, I simply uh, encourage everyone to get involved in the process. And as we go through um, this um, conversation, I will again remind uh, everyone again how important it is to actually be a part of this process. We talked earlier uh, and there was a, a, a question or a statement uh, about someone asking you the question of, are you going to talk about in the process, will you talk about the plantation owners who fleed and left their plantations uh, uh, you know, doing the war, and I would think that that would be a no-brainer almost. That you you absolutely have to address it. What what is the thought? Well, you know, between the two of us, we've worked a number of years with the National Park Service, where sensitivity was a central tenet of the work that we had to do. Whether it's Dr. King and her work there my work at Fort Sumter, her work at Selma, my work with Gullah Geechee. All of these stories are part of our American experience had to do sometime with a sensitive storyline. Um, yes, in order for reconstruction to be born here in Port Royal in the Buford community, white plantation owners left. Correct. Their leaving created the atmosphere for this event to take place here. So how can we have a conversation about an event that took place if we didn't talk about part of the catalyst that allowed the event to take place? And so I realized that, you know, we have to talk about all of those who are involved in this process. The good, the bad, the ugly. And we also have to tell what we call in the Park Service multiple points of view. So we have to tell it from the slaves to the free slaves to the plantation owners and them coming back. So it's a full story. You tell it boldly, actively, and truthfully. And you have to tell those stories because, again, that's what makes us America. It doesn't, you know, those, these are the stories. Um, and we had to tell about the plantation owners because it was their home and they left because of the union occupation, excuse me, and then they came back. So it's all part of that story. It's the story of talking about how the Port Roy experiment worked and how it didn't work, how it was the dress rehearsal for the full reconstruction. And um, yes, we have to tell that story. I and understand I why you are the superintendent of this process. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you, you're so right. It, um, it wouldn't be uh, of the value that it is if we left uh, s some important part out. Right. And that is the problem with American history today is that there are uh, so much that has been left out yep. because it made someone uncomfortable or, or whatever the situation right. is. But we history is about the past. Yes. And so I would just challenge people to to look at history for what it is, and that is uh, is the facts of what has already happened. It does not mean uh, that it governs the way we are today mm -hmm. or our future mm -hmm. but we ought to be able to look back and learn from it and be able to have a conversation about it because it is truth and you and, know one of the things i've said in, in at least over the last decade or so we cannot afford to demonize the calendar that's, that's true. because the calendar will tell you what happened the day it happened sometime the hour and the moment and who did it and and this is documented so we we cannot sit here and have a conversation about Reconstruction without looking at the calendar. We know that in November of 1861, the, the clock began with Reconstruction here in Buford. We know that. And so we have to move forward with that. We can't erase dates, take months out, subtract years. We can't do that. And then we also have to be honest, and there's always an elephant in the room. We have to talk about there were black 
plantation owners and we don't talk about that and that's a hard subject to talk about so you know there's other things that we have to bring out too see i i think i truly believe that history is about i ability to actually uh, reach out and embrace yes. everything. Everything. Uh, everything. You it's said correct. it earlier, I think, the good, the bad, the indifference, whatever. Yes. See, w- when we when we refrain from uh, speaking of the fact that there were black plantation owners yes. and that blacks had the same tendencies of the white you owners. know, plantation owners, when we when we talk about that we tell a truth number one but number two we also you talk about demonizing the calendars mm-hmm. there no one no race has a monopoly on evil uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, none. Right. course of this history yeah. of man mm-hmm. and, and yeah. so therefore if we just look for the facts yeah. look at the and for the truth that we might be able to to teach the truth to generations present and future Mm -hmm. that we all might become a better society as a result of it. Is that? That's true. And I would say as as an agency, we have struggled with that. You know, I've been around long enough with the Park Service to know when I, in my early days, Mm -hmm. about 30 years or so ago, we as an agency at Civil War Parks didn't talk about the Civil War in the context of slavery being a central reason why the war started. We just didn't say that. We were, no the one probably told you. Yeah, social, no, political climate. Right. No one, the supervisor didn't tell you not to say it, but the atmosphere was there that you knew you should not say and it. And the <laughs> script that was written, the script that was written might have not been in, in pen and paper, yeah. right. but the script that was written was understood. based upon the language that everybody mm-hmm. above you used. Right. Yes. It lets you know what the parameters were, that is yes. correct. and so therefore it was left out. Mm-hmm. Yes. And thereby we have generations of young people who really do not know the truth of yes. American history yes. because it has been slanted yes. away from the truth because it made someone feel uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Right. I, I, I detest that word really <laughs> almost is. because it is always, you know, I'm uncomfortable with that. Yeah. Well, what is it that makes you uncomfortable about the truth? Yeah. I've heard that so many yeah. times. I, 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 think, yeah. I think, you know, and, and we, we, we really... Rationalize it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we say, you know, people say, there are some people who say, we are a Christian nat- uh, nation. Well, uh, that's debatable. But if you are a Christian, then your Christianity is based on truth. Right. Uh, and treat me. And, and yeah. so yeah. why would we ever be uncomfortable yeah. with truth? And I think for us as an agency, you know, we have examined how history is presented to the American public at home, maybe in a church setting, perhaps in an educational school setting. And then you have the National Park Service. And we realize that on many occasions, we may be ahead of the other three because they are uncomfortable. And for a while, sometimes we have been uncomfortable. So for me and I know for Melissa, we do not see this journey as an uncomfortable journey. I don't. I know no. she doesn't. No. You, you, it, I can tell that you all, you basically eat, sleep, and breathe <laughs> the National Park Service and what you do. You, you are doing something that you really enjoy doing, uh, of which I think is of great importance that you really do enjoy doing it and not only do you enjoy doing it but you have a great sense of pride in what you are doing and this is a subject and an area that really there really is a a personal pride uh, that you get from this am i right correct first i get to talk about my hometown the home state i grew up in and uh conversation or a story that never was told well in the history books 
And so I get to do this through my park service career. I get to come home and do this. Um, and it's just been an honor to work at these different parks and whether they were, I, I've never worked at a Civil War park. I've worked at a Revolutionary War park and I did some natural parks and I've done Hispanic um, parks. So I've got to do a little bit of history and learn a little bit more about myself in the context of America. And I've got to teach people, even my family. I didn't know about the National Park Service. I was kind of plucked to work at the National Park Service. I said, this is a great job. And it's been an honor and a privilege. I always tell people, this is my calling. What I do, this is, yes. this, is th this. you know, you find your job. I've never had a job. I've had a career. Some days it might feel like it was a job. But this is my calling. This is, this is my gift that I give back to the world. This is the gift that, you know, the Lord gave me and I give to other people in helping them establish these parks and tell the stories and, you know, get the community involved. So, yes, it's, it's a commitment. And yeah. I definitely um, echo that, you know, this last month was my 37th year with the National Park Service. And I realized that I'm blessed to, to still be here, to be a part of it, and to be relevant. Yeah. That's the key. People sometimes are on jobs for a long period, but they're not relevant. Yeah. And and having the opportunity, you know, probably as the only person in the Park Service who was around in December of 2000 when this was first discussed right here in Beaufort, and to have the opportunity 17 years later to be a part of it now, I, I know that's that that's a mandate from above. So I understand that, and so in all the work that I've done in, in the 37 years, I know that I've been placed here for such a time as this, and I accept that. Which is a um, which really is a great thing. We we congratulate you on your twenty seven years of service. Thirty seven. Uh, uh, Thirty seven <laughs> years. I, I'm going to have to have them uh, adjust that on your thirty seven years of uh, of service. It is a great testament uh, uh, to to actually be dedicated to do anything for thirty seven years, and this important work is really really uh, one that is um, to to be admired, if you will, because there are just so many things that the park services do that that really uh, is a great benefit to uh, society. And what you are doing and putting together here now, I think is um, it will go a long way and will speak volumes uh, um, in the future to what was doing during this time. Uh, uh, by uh, the approval of the first black president of the United States of America. I think that is significant. There are a lot of people who, who would feel uncomfortable by me saying that, but I think it mm -hmm. is worthy of saying because I think we just ought to, number one, start to be proud of who we are mm -hmm. and the accomplishments that we have made uh, thinking about in 1861, uh, uh, most of, uh, you know, I uh, race were enslaved in the South. Correct. And so uh, since uh, 1861 until now, uh, we have moved uh, uh, up the ladder, if you will, and it is not complete. It yeah. is not over right. by any means, but in spite of. Yeah. In spite of the hindrances and in spite of the injustices, we move forward right. because we move forward in faith. You said that you deem yourself blessed. I, I love to hear people s use that word mm. because we are blessed of God. Mm. It is not luck. Yes, it sir. is we are blessed. And I don't mean to preach at all, but <laughs> I, I, I sort of get pulled off. <laughs> Uh, if you will, uh, you know, th this quest of us learning history and where blacks stand in history, I, I think it is, a, it is an important uh, process. I believe it is a process. Uh, I told you earlier, we took 73 young people two weeks ago up to uh, D.C. and uh, for two days we were in the um, African American Museum and Culture Center and that was a sight to behold it really uh, was a sight to behold I can't tell you how many times uh, tears came to my eyes uh, but it was a, uh, just a great 
uh, experience, uh, not just for the young people, but but uh, I, I think I've benefited as much as anyone. But that's a part of this process that we are going through in America as African Americans because we never had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It did not exist before. And so I salute the efforts that you all uh, are, are making to make this a reality. And so I'm going to stop and let you interject, if you will, uh, and tell me uh, what your thoughts are. Well, I grew up in a small town um, here in South Carolina, King Street. During the era of Reconstruction, Stephen Swales was the mayor of Buford, excuse me, was the mayor of King Street, South Carolina. That wasn't taught to me in elementary, middle, or high school. Not until I got to college did I know that. Stephen Swales lived for a while here in Buford because he was a member of the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. After the Civil War, he didn't return to the North. He eventually moved to King Street, where he became the mayor of King Street. Later on, Stephen Swales became the president pro tem of the Senate of the state of South Carolina. He was the highest elected official in the state Senate. Later on, Stephen Swales was Robert Small's attorney. And on many occasions, Robert Smalls would go to King Street by train to visit his attorney, Stephen Swales. One of the episodes when he went up to visit um, Mr. Swales, Mr. Swales took him out in the community, you know, to visit the citizens because they were proud to see Congressman Smalls. One of his trips to King Street and going out to the countryside, history tells me that they were met by vigilantes. They were probably not happy that Robert Smalls was there. And as I read the historical account, which was not taught to me in school, I saw familiarity. First thing it said that this episode happened in a community in my home area called White Oak. That's okay, that's coincidental. Then the next thing I read is it, it happened in the churchyard of Wilson Chapel United Methodist Church. I said, well, that's coincidental. And then it enlisted the men that came to help Stephen Swales and to help protect Congressman Smalls. Men like Montgomery and McAllister, McKnight and Wilson. And that's when it hit me. This episode happened in the churchyard of the church I attended as a child. In the community that I once lived in, and the surnames are relatives down to Montgomery, who is my mother maiden's name. What a story. I am so glad you shared that with us because that, if anyone hear that and does not see the relevance of that to deprive young blacks black boys and black girls of that history and those facts all of these years for them and you not to know think of the dreams that might have been born right. had they known that fact right. and that's what I think that is the evil of us not embracing, embracing truth Right. And history is because it deny people of the experience of having dreams and being able to believe that, you know, if they did it, having been exposed to the harsh realities that they went through, if they achieved those things, well, why can't I? Right. And then we wonder why we have the problems in society right, that we have right, right. is because these young people don't know the truth. Right. They don't know that they are descendants. I mean, think about right. your family. Yeah. Your family having been involved back in the 1860s yeah. and the 1870s right. having this man 
from your hometown go and go into the House of Representatives. Go and be the mayor of your hometown. T- you never believe, probably coming up, you never believe that there were ever a black man that was the mayor of your city. Yeah. It wasn't presented to me. <laughs> it, it, it just wasn't. And, and so people want, they, they go, oh, you know, why do you get so excited? It is because it's important. It's important. Right. It is important. To kill the dream yeah. of young folks is absolutely evil, and, and whether you had the intent or well, not. Right, because the, the reality, say God forbid on that tragic date that Mayor Swales, Senator Swales, Congressman um, Smalls have been taken out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We wouldn't be here today because the, the things... Would have the, the, the story would have right. been there. Well. And, and that indeed was the method whereby they used to suppress yeah. and intimidate right. uh, our, our forefathers right. and to even remove them from offices right. that they were duly elected to. Right, right. Those, those men didn't come as constituents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they come Definitely to, not. It was a constituent Correct. visit. Exactly. They were there to take him out. I, I think that is, that is just so powerful. It is a powerful testimony of how important it is. And I tell folks, that's my personal connection to Reconstruction. It's that mo- can't be taken away from me. It, it's a moving one. <laughs> it, it is definitely a, a, a moving one. And I think every uh, person in the Alan Montgomery and all of those families. Wilson. <laughs> Wilson just, just have to have an immense yeah. uh, uh, amount of pride uh, as uh, it, being a part of it. Yeah. it, it is, yeah. it, And that's what history Does. will do for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Melissa. What do you think? Have you had you heard that story? Yes, I know you, yeah. you probably no. had before. Uh, it's but my it's, first. But year. it's still a great story. Yeah. It is even it, we hear it because it, it, it that is the connection, and that's also the connection to the people that um, and the different stories that you hear. I don't have a reconstruction story as yet as I know of. You dig deeper. Yeah, I have to dig <laughs> deeper. But um, the story, the, 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 for me, is going to the parks. So I have the opportunity, and I'm, I'm a little different than everybody. I get to go to the parks. I get to hear the story. I get to embrace the people. Then I leave and I go to the next one. But as I go, um, the stories are connected. And so this would be my kind of, mine won't be Reconstruction, be post-Reconstruction, Jim Crow, and Civil Rights Movement. I spent 16 years at the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Site. Um, and I was, the, um, in, I was the education, then I became the chief. And um, I thought I knew a lot of stories about Martin Luther King. And then when I found out about this park and knew that the SCLC and Dr. King would come down here and have planning meetings and there was a King retreat. And I'm like, okay, this is not in any books. Mm-hmm. So, th- so my journey through the National Park Service is find out more about myself, more about my people and other cultures that is not in the history books. And you know, to know that Dr. King came down here and planned a lot of the marches and stuff here, mm-hmm. You know, in the Low Country. I mean, that, that it was. You know, we knew we went to Bahamas, but you know, this again, <laughs> it was something that was left out. And I figured, being an MLK and studying Dr. King, um, that I should know that. So that that's what this job has brought to me. When you go and you learn about, um, you know, different cultures and different. I always say ethnic groups. I, can't, I don't like to say races because we're all we're one race. We're human race. Yeah. But um, to learn about different ethnic groups and the different backgrounds, you learn the story. And again, again, that's what makes. That's what makes us Americans, and that's what makes this America. It is a melting pot. Um, I'm not an immigrant. I was born here, and I always see things different. I always tell people, I was born here. This is my home. I, I know I'm African, but you know, you're know, you immigrants. You came here. I was born here, so I do have to claim this as my home. I, you know, America is my home. That's all I know. But it is these stories that make you know that makes us so unique and we have a story to tell all, the stories are not all great and it's yeah. not and i don't think any people but um and the national park service um as michael said um no the past 20 years has been changing because we have to tell the story because our constituents are changing yeah. and um you know they're more urban um people more closer to the cities uh people like to do weekend trips and learn a little bit and people are really interested in learning about their history but they want to hear it correctly yeah. And they want to hear, like you said, the truth. It has to be based in truth. And that's what people don't want to hear. They don't want to sugarcoat it. 
Um, and um, so I, I get the, uh, the wonderful opportunity to do that, to help um, parks and communities um, and, and our partners tell these stories. So We, we yeah. thank uh, you both. We have had Mr. Micah Allen and uh, Miss Melissa uh, English, who is uh, in the process of actually um, having open houses, uh, and they are going to tell you again about the dates and the time, but uh, the first one will be over at Penn Center, and then it'll go to Port Royal, and then back to here in Beaufort to the historic Tabernacle Baptist Church, and they are going to now give you the timeline uh, uh, of those meetings. And again, I encourage each and every one of us to attend one of those three meetings. Yeah, again, um, Melissa and I really would enjoy you all coming out to be a part of this process. Uh, yes, the first meeting will be July 24th, which is a Monday, between 7 to 9 p.m. at Penn Center at the Vazell Community House. So definitely, if you can make that as a start, we would appreciate that. Uh, the next night, the 25th of July, which is a Tuesday, between 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. at the Town of Port Royal's um, Town Hall Chamber. So if you can come out to that, we will appreciate that. And finally, again, our last meeting will be on the July 27th, which is a Thursday, between 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. at Historic Tabernacle Baptist in downtown Beaufort. And again, for those who may not be able to make um, any of the meeting physically, you are not left out. If you go to our website, um, online, you will be able to visit a, a section of that website that will like leave your comments, thoughts, and suggestions there. So, to be honest, there's no excuse. No, no. I, I, that's the simple way I can say it. Yes. <laughs> it has been our pleasure to uh, have you on Community Corner. Uh, we thank you. It is always a pleasure to uh, have a conversation with you. And uh, today on this important subject, um, we uh, support you in your efforts, uh, both here, the radio station, and our church family. We promote you uh, highly because you are doing great work. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Community Corner on 94.5 Praise. And don't forget to join us every Thursday at 7 o'clock for the latest in community programs and highlights. If you want more information on today's topic or guests, you can find it on our website at praise945.com. May the peace and blessings of the Lord be yours.